Good morning and praise the Lord. This is so great. Welcome to this week's message. It's just so great to have you, whether you're watching this as it's premiering or later on. And I also just want to say thank you to everyone who has subscribed. We just passed 500 subscribers this week, which is awesome. It's insane. It's wonderful. And it's it's amazing to see God's word going out. So thank you to everyone from around the world. And we have some subscribers from all over. So it's just, it's just been fantastic. It's such a blessing. So thank you all. And I hope you're ready to be encouraged because um, this message has a lot of life and a lot of peace in it. And it's going to talk about something that might be holding you back. So I'm really glad that you're watching right now. We've been going through the Old Testament and uh, we're going to be talking about a time after Moses. Okay, last message was about Leviticus. Um, now we're past Moses and we're actually past Joshua even, okay? So Moses led the people, then Joshua led the people into the promised land. And then there was a dark time in Israel's history, and that is chronicled in the book of Judges. And that's where our message is. And the message is called, You Have a King. It's from Judges chapter 17, verses 1 to 6. So I I'm just going to open up in prayer, and I hope that you're ready to receive what the Lord has to say because the Lord wants to lead you and he wants to lead you by still waters and you do have a king. And we're going to look at this powerful, in some ways, really sad story from the Old Testament and see a, a, a very vital lesson that we all need right now. We all need this. So let's join together in prayer and we're going to look to the word of God to show us just how amazing it is to have God as our king and how much we need God's leadership in our lives right now. You have a king. Here we go. Lord, I thank you so much that you are present here right now, that you speak to us, that you lead us. And as we look to a very dark chapter in the history of Israel, Lord, as we look to the book of Judges and look at the first six verses of chapter 17, we pray we would see what you have led us to see and that we would realize just how much we need you. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, let's go ahead and read this and then dig in. Judges chapter 17, starting in verse 1. Now there was a man from the mountains of Ephraim whose name was Micah. And he said to his mother, The eleven hundred shekels of silver that were taken from you, and on which you put a curse, even saying it in my ears, here is the silver with me, I took it. And his mother said, May you be blessed by the Lord, my son. Verse 3. So when he had returned the eleven hundred shekels of silver to his mother, his mother said, I had wholly dedicated this I I had wholly dedicated the silver from my hand to the Lord for my son, to make a carved image and a molded image. Now therefore I will return it to you. Verse four. Thus he returned the silver to his mother, then his mother took two hundred shekels of silver and gave them to the silversmith, and he made it into a carved image and a molded image, and they were in the house of Micah. Verse 5. The man Micah had a shrine, and made an ephod and household idols, and he consecrated one of his sons, who became his priest. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. This text is from the book of Judges, a book that picks up at the death of Joshua, pretty much. Okay, So it starts a very dark period in Israel's history where they were not following after the Lord, and they had to be rescued by many different judges, and it goes in chronological order. But at the end of the book, there are two stories that give a summary of just how terrible and dysfunctional 
things really were during those days. And it gives an explanation, which we see in verse 6, and it's repeated again elsewhere in the book. We're going to get into that. But verse 1 of our text introduces us to this main character. His name is Micah. He's a man of the mountains. Okay, He's a mountain man from the tribe of Ephraim. Now, apparently, his mom had... 1100 shekels of silver stolen from her okay and he admits to her i'm the one that stole it now you might be wondering how much is that that's 28 pounds of silver it's a lot of silver where did he even hide it okay and her reaction is really interesting she's so thankful and she's like may you be blessed of the lord her reaction is like what and then she makes a promise in verse 3 that she wants to make an idol for him. It's created in verse 4. This is totally against everything that God has directed his people, not to mention stealing from your own family and, and, and going after other gods and creating household idols. And then we find out in verse 5, Micah goes full-fledged into this idolatry. He almost sets up like his own religion, okay? He makes a shrine. He makes an ephod, okay? He has household idols, and he makes his very own son a priest, even though his son is not from the tribe of Levi. He's an Ephraimite, and he's starting his own religion against the Lord, and we have a very interesting verse in verse 6 that kind of gives an explanation for this baffling situation. How could this even be with God's people? How could this even happen? For there was no king in Israel in those days. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. Wow, that's why. There was, there was no king in Israel during that time. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. That's repeated again. This statement of there was no king in Israel, that was repeated in not just 17.6, it was repeated again in 18.1, chapter 18, verse 1, chapter 19, verse 1, and chapter 21, verse 25. When the scriptures repeat something four times, it's important. It's a summary statement. You see, the people were just doing what seemed right to them in the moment. That's what they were following. They were as you may hear culturally and from different movies and things, they were following their heart, not following the Lord. They were their own kings. They were fiercely independent. They weren't answering to the Lord anymore. In days of old with Moses, when there was something that happened and they went to Moses and were like, what should we do? Moses would be like, I don't know. I'm not the king. Let's talk to God. Let's inquire of the Lord. And they would inquire of the Lord all the time. And then with Joshua, it was the same thing. They would inquire of the Lord. But this is a time when they stopped asking God. They were making decisions and didn't even care what God thought about those decisions. They didn't even ask. They didn't, in, they didn't even seem interested in what God even had to say. The sad truth is there really was a king in Israel. God makes it plain that he was to be their king. And God was still there. In fact, God was the one that would send the judges, right? But the sad truth is, he was so ignored, it was as if there was no king in Israel. And while that is repeated four times, twice there's there's a consequence that's explained after that. We see that in verse 6 here in chapter 17 and also in verse 25 of chapter 21. And everyone did what was right in his own eyes. They perceived, hey, I'm, I'm the one that's in control here. And we see that it brought chaos. Morally, it brought total destruction total dysfunction. Not at all like the blessings that were spoken over the people of God in Deuteronomy just before they entered in. They weren't accessing any of that. They weren't living in peace. No one living through those days would say, oh, this is wonderful. 
there were shameful, terrible moments, like this story. It's interesting, one of my favorite psalms, and you're probably familiar with it, is Psalm 23. Psalm 23 talks about what God does for his people, and it, it says that he, he leads me by still waters. That's talking about God's leadership. They didn't have still waters during those days. They had chaos, craziness, terrible dysfunction. But here, David says, he leads me by still waters. He restores my soul. Oh, that sounds wonderful, doesn't it? He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. See, if only they embraced God as king as he was, they could have been led by still waters. They could have been led to paths of righteousness. They could have had their souls restored. They could have had that they had access. Because God was standing ready. And you look at the life of David. God called him a man of war. He was running for his life. He was in so many battles. And even later on in life, he had so many trials as a consequence of his sin with Bathsheba. Somebody would look at his life and say, David, he didn't, he wasn't by still waters. Like he didn't have that peace. It was all in his heart. It was his soul. He was at rest. And that's something we all need right now, isn't it? That's something we need to experience. I was thinking about whether I'm experiencing that. If I'm not, am I really letting God lead me? Is he really king for me? See, good news is you have a king and we know his plan. He wants to lead you beside still waters. He wants to lead you in paths of righteousness. He wants to restore your soul. He's a good leader. He's a great king. But we can get caught up in this independent, spirited, oh, yes, I'm going to do it all on my own. I'm not talking about asking God what, you know, type of clothing you should wear, you know, what, what food you should eat, things like that. I'm talking about when there's a big decision, you know you need God's, God's wisdom. Do you inquire of him? Like the people of God did under the leadership of Moses, under the leadership of Joshua. Do you inquire of him? Do you ask, Lord, what should I do? You are my king. It's not me. I'm not the one in charge. You have a king. This gives a picture of how terrible things can be when we don't let God lead. And if we don't let him lead us, we shouldn't be surprised when we're not beside still waters. Whatever decisions you have coming up, whatever things you're going through, isn't it a comfort to know that you have a king? Doesn't that bring peace. That could be something that's missing right now. You might be wondering, where, where is this peace that I need so much? It could be here. This could be the thing that you've been missing. You might be in a season where you've been calling all the shots and you might need to inquire of the Lord because things do fall apart. And we see that in 17, don't we? It's a sad story. The story of Micah they fell so bad from where they were. But God was not far away. All they had to do was call upon him and he would help them. And same with you. God is not far away. And he wants to lead you. Let him be king in your life. You have a king. This is great news. You don't have to have a life like the book of Judges. You don't have to have a life where things are absolutely falling apart. Even if you have a life with challenges, massive challenges like what King David faced. Know that King David said, the Lord leads me by still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Let's pray and thank God for being our king. And when you're discouraged, remember you have a king. Ask him, inquire of him, let him lead you. 
you have a king. It's good news, isn't it? Let's pray together. Lord, I thank you that you're king. Thank you for making your words so clear. Thank you for the book of Judges that shows us a grim picture of what it's like when we do not give you the space and the opportunity to lead as you should. When we don't come to you, when we're at those important junctures, we want to honor you and worship you as our king. You are our king and we glorify you. Thank you for this time in your word, Lord. Thank you for this refreshing reminder. May it bring us peace, Lord. May it bring us abundant peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. What a time. If you would like to contact us, you can email us, contact at leptachurch.com. You can also comment below. It means so much to us that you watched this all the way through. That's phenomenal. Please know that we love you. We love your family. God bless you. Thank you for taking some time today to watch this and feel free to interact with us. And we hope to see you again on our channel for hopefully more hope and more encouragement. So we'll see you then. God bless you in every way, and may we walk in the peace and awareness that we have a king. Glory to God. Bless you.